Hey friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be making some more delicious breakfast recipes. The idea with these recipes is that we wanted to try to be able to whip them all up in one bowl if we could. That way hopefully we're decreasing the amount of dishes that we're dirtying, so we're decreasing the amount of cleaning we need to do. Um, and then once we've whipped it up in the bowl, we can cook it either on the stove or in the oven until it's ready. So we've got three recipes to share with you in total today. There's two sweet ones and one savory one, so let's dive right in. We're starting with a savory recipe first. It's a delicious chickpea omelet sandwich. So to a large bowl, we're gonna add a tablespoon of ground flax seeds plus three tablespoons of water, giving it a mix and then letting it sit to gel while we finely chop about half of a red bell pepper. And we're also gonna finely chop half of a red onion. Next, we're gonna be using some chickpea flour, which is also known as garbanzo bean flour. I, in the past, and still kind of right now, if I can be honest, I've been intimidated when it comes to trying new flours, but I'm really glad I gave this one a try. It's really versatile. We've been using it a lot in our recipes, so you might see it a little bit more in future recipes. But because it comes from ground up chickpeas, it means that it's higher in fiber, higher in protein, it's gluten free for those who need it. And I personally just like the nutty, kind of earthy flavor that it gives. So returning to the bowl, the ground flax seeds should have sufficiently gelled up and if so we can then add to it half of a cup of chickpea flour, half of a cup of plant-based milk, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, a quarter teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder and salt, a bit of freshly cracked black pepper along with just over half of the chopped bell pepper and chopped onion. We're going to reserve the rest of it for later. Now we can mix the batter together until it's well combined and there's no chunks of flour left in it. And then we can move it over to the stove. We're gonna first heat up a large pan or skillet on medium high heat. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And when it's heated up, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of the omelet mixture, spreading it out gently to create these small, thin, little round omelet shapes. After about two to three minutes, the top of the omelets are gonna start to bubble, the edges are gonna look slightly cooked, and when it's lightly golden on the bottom, we can then give it a flip and let the omelet cook for another couple minutes on the other side or until it's all lightly golden and cooked through, and then we can transfer it to a plate. We're then gonna repeat this with the remaining batter until we finished it all up. Next, we're gonna toast some bread. Personally, for this recipe, I like brushing just a little bit of olive oil on both sides of some slices of bread, and then I like to toast it on a skillet until it's crispy and golden on both sides, but you could also just use plain toasted bread here if you'd like. Now, all that's left at this point is to assemble the sandwich. I like to spread on a layer of vegan mayonnaise on the base of the toasted bread, and then I top it with some lettuce, and then on goes our little tiny omelets, and then whatever other toppings you like. I like some fresh tomato slices, some thinly sliced ripe avocado, some sriracha hot sauce, and finally, a sprinkle of some of that reserved bell pepper and onion for a bit of crunch. This omelet sandwich is an absolute game changer for me. It's simple to make, and the chickpea flour here really impresses with its taste and texture, and it's perfect for people who prefer savory breakfasts, or you could even make this one for lunch. For the next recipe, we're making some waffles for breakfast. Honestly, this is so much fun. So we recently just got a waffle maker, which is what we're gonna use to make this recipe. But if you don't have one at home, you can still make it. Just use the batter instead to put on a preheated skillet or pan on the stove. And then you're gonna make something that more resembles pancakes, but it should still taste delicious. To start to a large bowl, we're gonna add one and a half cups of plant-based milk along with one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, or you could use regular vinegar here. Then we're gonna give it a mix and let it rest for about five minutes. The milk will start to slightly thicken and curdle, and that's totally normal. Now when the time is up, we can then add to the bowl the remaining ingredients, which is gonna be two cups of whole wheat flour, a third of a cup of unsweetened applesauce, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and half a teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna mix this all together until it's just combined. Just a little heads up, if you are gluten-free, you can try using buckwheat flour here instead. We've done it once before and it works quite well. Um, and if you don't have any applesauce on hand, we just used it as a natural sweetener, but you could use a mashed banana instead or a couple tablespoons of sugar, whichever one you've got on hand. So once it's all been mixed together really well, we can start making our waffles. So to a preheated waffle maker, I'm first gonna brush on just a little bit of oil and then we can gently spoon on a few scoops of the waffle batter spreading it out to cover the surface of the pan. And when we're done, we can gently drop the lid and let it cook for about four to five minutes or until it's golden brown on both sides. And when it is all cooked, we can then transfer it to a plate 
and repeat this with the remaining batter until it's all used up. Now once our waffles are cooked and ready and finished, we can then top it with whatever is our favorite toppings. I personally love it with some coconut yogurt on top, along with some fresh fruit, whatever is in season, whatever you've got on hand. A little sprinkle of icing sugar is always a nice little touch. And if you like it more sweet, you can even drizzle on a little bit of maple syrup. Another variation, if you're feeling like making it taste a bit more decadent, is to add some fresh fruit along with a drizzle of melted dairy-free dark chocolate. This one is always Robin's favorite. Or you could also try the classic, which I always feel like is sliced up banana with a drizzle of nut butter, like peanut butter or almond butter. And we added a little sprinkle of hemp seeds over top here too. But again, you can get creative with these. These are just some ideas. There's something about the shape of waffles that makes it feel like it's dessert for breakfast, but these waffles aren't overly sweet on their own, so feel free to serve it alongside some fresh fruit if you'd like, just to add to that natural sweetness, but also it makes for a more balanced breakfast. These waffles also freeze really well, so you can always pop any leftovers in the freezer, and then you can toast them up whenever you want a quick brekkie. For the final recipe, we're making a baked berry and pecan oatmeal. To a large bowl, like we did before, we're gonna add one tablespoon of ground flax seeds and three tablespoons of water, mixing it together and letting it sit for about five minutes to gel. In vegan baking, this is usually called a flax egg because it acts much like an egg would in a traditional recipe in that it binds things together. While we wait for that, we're gonna lightly grease a medium-sized baking dish with a little bit of vegetable oil, and we'll also preheat the oven to 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. Now, once the flax seeds have gelled, we can then add to the bowl two ripe bananas, mashing it the best we can until it's nice and pureed. And then we can add in one and a half cups of plant-based milk, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon each of baking powder and pure vanilla extract, and half a teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna mix this all together. Once it's all combined, we can then add in two cups of old-fashioned rolled oats, and a third a cup or so of raw pecans that you can either chop up or here I'm just gonna break it apart using my hands. Then we're gonna mix this all together until everything is super well combined. Now comes the best part of the baked oatmeal, which is the fruit that we're gonna be adding in. So feel free to add about a cup and a half of any kind of fruit that you enjoy. We're gonna be adding in a mix of fresh blueberries and sliced strawberries that we're gonna gently fold into the oatmeal. We're using fresh berries here just because it's in season for us now, but feel free to use whatever you've got on hand. I'm thinking some peaches are also nice, nectarines, fresh mango, or you could use frozen berries, uh, poached pears. The options are endless and you can change it up every time too. Now when ready, we can pour this into our baking dish and bake it in the preheated oven for about 35 to 40 minutes or until it starts to get lightly golden on the top. And when we've removed it from the oven, we're just gonna let it cool a little bit before we serve it up. The baked oatmeal is as delicious as is, but I feel like it's so much better when you top it with some extra stuff, just like we did with the waffles. So either some extra fruit, maybe some plant-based yogurt, or a drizzle over top of some kind of nut butter, maybe even some maple syrup or agave syrup. But this baked oatmeal, it makes a pretty big batch, so it's great for families or for anyone who feels like they have a really big appetite in the morning. And you can feel free to pack any leftovers and put it in the fridge. That way you can just reheat it the next day if you need a quick breakfast. And there you have it. There's three new recipes that you can add to your arsenal, to your library, that you can try out in the morning for breakfast. And on our blog, we always provide both metric and imperial units of measure for our ingredients, by the way. So if you're interested in gram and milliliter amounts, instead of cup and tablespoon amounts, like you see us give in the video, check out those blog posts. So I'll leave those links for you in the description box below. But thanks a lot for watching. Pick Up Limes signing off, and we'll see you in the next video. In vegan baking, this is usually called a flax egg because it acts much like an egg would in a traditional bleh bleh. You heard that, right? Egg. In vegan baking, this is called a flax egg because it acts much like an <laughs> Now I'm laughing. Now all I hear is egg. Because it acts much like an egg would in traditional recipe. <laughs> I see you laughing. I see you laughing. Because it acts a lot like an egg would in a traditional recipe in that it binds everything together. <laughs> so hard. That was so hard. <laughs> Can I go? Go ahead and use uh, buckwheat flour here instead of whole wheat flour. Um, we've tried it. I don't know why I always make those bloop, bloop, bloop noises like I'm a fish. Maybe it's because I'm a Pisces. Like bloop, 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 bloop. That must be it. Are you making fun of me? Okay, <laughs> ready? This piece of hair is killing me. It's killing me. 
See? This. You see it, right? Oh my God. 